Good morning from location two of uh, Jamie's van build party. Today, we go down and get a bunch of packages for everybody. But uh, here is uh, the other spot. We're just kind of up on a uh, little hillside. We got booted out of the last place because it was indeed BLM. Uh, sorry, it was indeed Arizona State Land. This is BLM. Um, but actually, I kind of like this uh, scenery better over here. So, let's hit the road. See that mail center? Let me show you how this uh, living without an address thing works. So wherever you are in the town, you can just sign up at a place like that and then have packages sent there and then just go pick them up. So these are some of uh, his packages and uh, some of the groups and things like that. Um, so pretty easy, right? Um, I don't see what I ordered. I ordered a stabilizer. Uh, he came by yesterday. He must have it in his school bus. The first breakfast burrito. Uh, hi, can I get a, a breakfast burrito with steak? No no cheese? No queso? Oh, sorry, I can't hear you. Uh, I gotta turn the engine off. Mission accomplished. Thanks, Filibertos. bumped into here. Caravan Carolyn. It looks like she's gonna have a little work done today. Can we uh, say hello this morning? Um, not right now because <laughs> I had a disaster coming down here. What happened? I forgot to batten down the hatches and everything. Oh man, everything's on the floor. Yeah. We'll check everything. in. We'll check in a little bit later then. But hey, hi, Jax. How hi. are you? <laughs> good, good morning. <laughs> what? Just tell me what what do you haven't done today? I am. I have a sink that right now drains into a bucket, and I'm going to put the drain through the floor. Floor. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So you can you can rinse all that eco-friendly soap away. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And eco-friendly shampoo. There we go. Yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> we'll check in a little bit later. Okay. Hey, Eric. How are you this morning? Miss you, buddy. If you guys don't know about Jamie, he's one of the nicest individuals I've ever met. Um, you should check out this backstory if you don't know it. But basically, he crowdfunded a whole entire bus and fixed it up for Tamara. And we're going to meet Tamara. Super cool. Meet Tamara. Hi. Um, can you give us a quick tour? Yeah, don't look at my trash, though. That's a situation. <laughs> yeah, don't All right. so, um, so I was living in a car for two years. And I'd met Jamie at this event last year. And he made a couple videos with me. And apparently his viewers liked me. And anyway, so he approached me after RTR and said, I have an idea for a video series. I want to document one conversion start to finish. Like, even the process of shopping around, purchase, and then every element of conversion. And it would be available as like a how-to resource for people who don't know where to start, what to do next. Would you like to be the recipient of this thing? And I had had this intention for 2017 that I wanted to have a home I could stand up in. And I was like, really kind of like overwhelmed, you know, and I still am actually, but ultimately I did say yes. I thought about it for a while and I did say yes. And I couldn't love this home more, seriously, but it's like weird to live in, to have something like yeah. that I had no effort. Yeah. And it's so amazing. I, lo I love the, uh, the, drawer handles I did here. That. You did that? Yeah, so we got some antlers of some sort. Yeah. Uh, guys, if you didn't know, I also donated to the cause. Uh, you, you're very welcome. Uh, I wasn't using it. I have the portable one, Sorry, but I wanted a, a good home for it, and this is definitely a good home. Uh, okay. I think I already know what's behind this because I've seen other videos. Nice little shower situation and a uh, porta potty curve. Those are great. Yeah. Uh, similar layout to mine, and I like I like it. The floors are nice. Yeah, the floors make a big difference. I like I like how you guys use the same seats. I can entertain. You can entertain, and you got seat belts, yes. so that's nice. Passengers, they help with mm -hmm. gas. 
Yeah. Do ride shares. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> I, w I went to, I spent 11 hours talking to this 64 year old Jamaican dreadlock Rasta guy who sat right there next to me. We just chatted for 11 hours straight. That's amazing. Yeah, and gas. tell everybody what you do for a living because I would like to join you at some point. Oh, yeah. You should totally come for a class. So I teach um, primitive living wilderness survival skills for California Survival School and also I'm a backcountry guide for a wilderness therapy program in southern Utah. That's cool. Uh, that's the Anastasi or similar? I used to work for the Anastasi Foundation in Arizona, which is just magic. And now I work for a great program called Wingate Wilderness. Cool. Yeah. So we should hang and, and we're going to go out into the wilderness with like literally nothing. I would love to. Right? That is that would be awesome. we, uh, like we could survive with nothing? Yeah, absolutely. Oh yeah. my God. I would totally freak out. I, I, I swear, like if I don't have water, if I don't have food, if I think I'm going to die, that's going to be a serious test for me, more so than that bridge in Canada. All right, like I said, there's a lot of very interesting people over at this uh, van build party, and we're gonna go play chess with one of them. Look what I just ran into, it's a pig! Somebody has a pet pig! He's not a pet, his name is Kevin, and he's my service animal. Oh, okay. Yeah. A real, a real legit service animal, huh? Right. Oh my Even gosh. The ADA does not allow a pig to be a service animal, but he is trained to be one. Okay, so and, and I understand pigs are smarter than dogs. Wow. Buddy. Will disagree His name with is Kevin. That. Hi, Kevin. <laughs> Hi, Kevin. I apologize for eating all of your family members in the past. I feel That's terrible. Okay. You didn't save any for him. I, I went hog wild on the breakfast. <laughs> when he come along, I say, come on, pork chop chop. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. That's so cool. And if anybody has never pet a pig before, it feels like a dog with uh, hairspray on it. Yet again, I get my butt spanked by uh, Lavender. We'll call him Rob. Yeah. Uh, Rob has a cool, super cool story. It's a little weird calling you Rob because I call you Lavender. You can call me anything. Just don't call me too early in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, he's awesome. Uh, I, Lavender is one of my viewers. I uh, came out to the van build party to... Hoping to meet people like yourself. I feel like I got a backstage pass at a rock concert. We got Jamie, we got Jax, Panda, <laughs> we, Carolyn. There's, there's quite a few characters out here. And, and there's a lot of cool people who aren't YouTubers mm -hmm. out here. Including yourself. And I know you have a very interesting story, something way different than me okay. and a lot of other people. So let's rewind and tell us about you being a hobo and how that came about. That's Mr. Hobo to you. <laughs> <laughs> so what? So, so so tell me all about that and what, what was it like? It was fantastic before September 11th Twin Towers thing. Okay, why is that? What changed? Well, before um, you was out there freedom with movement. After the terrorist attack on September 11th, the feds came down heavy on trespassing on rail yards. I didn't know that. Oh, man. Yeah. It's you get caught on their property, you could automatically go to jail. Wow. Six months. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. So how long did you train hop? Um, about eight years. Uh-huh. Yeah. And w what was what brought you to that? Or how did you get into it? Well, I'm originally from Memphis, Tennessee. Um, after I got out of the Army in the early 80s, I needed a change. I moved to L.A. Mm -hmm. in, like, 88. That was like hitting a brick wall going 90 miles an hour. <laughs> um, three years later, it was before this last housing bubble, there was some kind of freeze on building. Uh, interest, banks, stuff. Yeah. Um, times were hard, and I decided to hit the road. <laughs> I was in Denver or something, Salt Lake or somewhere, and somebody was telling me about Traveler's Aid. I said, where is it? They said, just go two blocks <laughs> down there on the corner. And I went down there, and I was standing, I'm like, I don't see it. <laughs> and a freight train went by. I went back and I asked somebody and they said, oh yeah, it's right down there. <laughs> and I went back and looked again and I didn't see it. And another freight train went by and I'm like, oh, I get it. 
traveler's aid. Yeah. So, did you get on the first one by yourself? No, no, I was uh, a little bit intimidated. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of stuff when your kids, go, they go down to the nearest rail yard and maybe grab onto the ladders at a really slow pace and like let go and run back and you know do yeah. kid stuff yeah but this was like pretty serious because you're carrying your gear with you you know some weight and yeah stuff. anyway i met another guy and um i mentioned to him and he was getting ready to to roll out um and he kind of like let me come with them. Cool. And that's a whole nother story with <laughs> itself. I'm sure. But my first train ride was out of Grand Junction, Colorado. Yeah. In the early 90s. Yeah. Um, and I've been all across the northern border of the U.S., up and down the west coast, <coughs> Chicago down all the way into, like, I think Alabama, across like from the Mississippi all the way out through Texas into California. You know, I've done mm -hmm. some, yeah. got some miles under, some crack <coughs> under my belt. Yeah. You don't have to tell us a story about when you quit drinking, but I would love because it's it's something that a lot of people could relate to. So if you're willing to share that, great. If yeah. not, I totally understand. It's up it's to cool. you. No, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to share it because hopefully others will see it in this slight and say, oh, I can do that. Yeah. Well, when I left out of LA after that housing bubble in like 90 or 91, um, I knew I was going to encounter new people. And I was aware that sometimes you got to humble yourself and ask for help along the way. I mean, because I knew things could get hard. Um, and I didn't want to meet new people and make bad first impressions, smelling like alcohol, needing, you know, a bath and what, I mean, you just, you, some, those guys can be an eyesore. Yeah. Um, so I just said, I'm not going to drink. And that was about, what, 27 years ago? Were you kind of homeless then for all the 27 years or i like i prefer nomadic okay <laughs> okay gotcha no actually not the 27 years just through the 90s okay okay because um i wasn't drinking and i had the wherewithal to scrape up the funds to go to thailand to israel to turkey uh i did the train of uh, not hoboing i mm -hmm. i rode passenger trains um, out of Paris into Switzerland down into Italy and then loop back around. That's uh, nice. Yeah, I mean sober is cool, man. <laughs> yeah. So, um, do so much more. Uh, so you, you've been a nomad for a while then. So this isn't really anything too difficult for you to do. Well, I have the nomadic experience. Um, I, after, like I said, the, the pedestrian thing for 27 years I swept some things under the rug on those DUIs that needed to be addressed. Um, about three months ago, I sh or four months ago, wait a second. it took me about four months of red tape to get my license reinstated. Okay. Um, a week after I did that, I was approved for an auto loan. Mm. Um, I've had the, the vehicle for about two and a half months, and this is the honeymoon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I'm, I'm not afraid to get out on the road by myself because of my previous experience, and sitting in the Starbucks watching your videos and others, I knew I would meet some really good people out here. They're not, they're not all just a bunch of hippies and druggies hanging out in the desert and the vans and stuff. These are good-hearted, down-to-earth people. I would agree with you. And uh, a lot of them are really productive uh, members of society. And generous, too, out here. Jamie with his uh, van build, just yeah. do it, working on people's stuff for free. And, and for people like me, when I did not have a driver's license, 
and needing that travel fix, I could go into a Starbucks and watch like 40 minutes or an hour's worth of videos from you guys, and I'd go, I'm okay now. I don't have to jump on a train or a bus, and, and I mean, I'm good for another two weeks or yeah. something. <laughs> I'd like to thank all the boondocking YouTube producers for helping me spiritually. There we go. You know? Well, it was very nice meeting you. Yeah. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for whooping my butt three times on the no, chess no, table. No, 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 no. This man got <laughs> four stalemates or five in a row. And he <laughs> says he's a beginner. I don't know how he does it. Yeah, doing it. You're, do, you're too kind. Thanks for watching. That's about it for today. Um, I will catch you guys on the road or actually here tomorrow. I think we'll be poking around. Uh, also, I wanted to show you what I got. I got myself a crane uh, stabilizer. So expect some very cinematic uh, videos. Um, I had a camera and I bought the drops and spills with it. The camera died and so they wrote me a check for 85% of my purchase price. So I used that to get the camera. So pretty cool. So buy the drops and spills. It was only like 20 or 30 bucks. Totally worth it.